Hey everyone, uh, today I'm going to be talking about my undergraduate thesis that I've been working on. The talk's title shift happens all the time and we essentially look at how climatic niches uh, are different in primary and logged forests and how the differences in climatic niches determine survival trends in Himalayan bird species. To start things off, we all know that there is a rapid loss of biodiversity that's ongoing in the world. And this is further exacerbated by the fact that anthropogenic modifications, such as logging and deforestation, further compound already existing global effects such as climate change. Most of our understanding of the effects of climate change and logging come from a perspective of community structure, abundance, and diversity, right? which are often one-time measurements uh, that, that studies can look at. However, what's largely lacking in the literature are studies that look at how anthropogenic change impacts demographic rates, like survival, and how anthropogenic change impacts phenotypic change uh, in parameters such as body mass. Now, why we can't only rely on pre-existing studies which look at community structure uh, as a variable is primarily because it's the vital rates rather than the community structure that determines long-term persistence uh, and viability of populations. Additionally, looking at phenotypic change over time can hint at possible underlying drivers behind the shift in community structure and vital rates. In short, studying uh, these parameters over a long period of time can help us better understand what's happening to a forest upon anthropogenic change and also predict the long-term impacts of that change on the biotic community. Now, in this particular talk, uh, the anthropogenic change that we're going to be focusing on is selective logging, wherein a forest that looks like this, with a largely contiguous canopy and very, very sparse undergrowth, goes to looking like this after selectively logged uh, three species are removed uh, from the forest. Therefore, the canopy is more open and the undergrowth as a result is also uh, denser. Now, within this framework, we basically ask two main questions. The first is if species with a smaller temperature humidity niche in primary forests. Now remember primary forests are the baseline in the study. So basically species with smaller temperature humidity niches in the primary forest, we'll call them specialists, are undergoing steeper body mass or survival declines over time after their forest is logged. So the prediction here is that thermal niche specialists are more sensitive to logging and therefore the smaller the, the niche area you have in your primary forest, the more likely you are to have survival declines when I log that forest. Now the parameters that we measure to quantify the size of the temperature humidity niche are the temperature humidity niche area, the temperature range within which a species is found and the humidity range within which the species is found. In addition to this, we ask if the degree of niche dissimilarity between logged and primary forests correlates with body mass or survival trends over time. Now here what we're essentially predicting is that if a species has very, very dissimilar niches between a primary forest that it's native to and in a logged forest where humans have artificially gone and removed trees from the forest, we predict that species with more dissimilar niches in these two habitats will undergo steeper declines in the logged forest. However, if the species has very, very similar niches in both primary and logged forest, then we predict that that species will not undergo that significant decline when I log a primary forest. And the measurement that we take for this is UDOI, which is an index of niche overlap. Uh, I will elaborate this uh, graphically later on. So to get you introduced to our study site, our work is focused on the tropical forests of the Eastern Himalayas, which is right there. And it's home to around 10% of the globe's bird biodiversity, which is a lot. And specifically, bird species here have been shown to be highly specialized to their thermal environment, making them very sensitive to any kind of anthropogenic change. Uh, our study focuses on plots set up in the Eagle Nest Wildlife Sanctuary in Arunachal Pradesh, here are the plots. As you can see here, the green plots represent primary forest plots 
and the red polygons represent the logged forest plots every arrow there represents a misplay now every arrow there represents a misplay right now what's a misplay so this is what a misplay looks like it's a very shallow net that you put across the forest and birds can't see this so they fly right into the net and they get caught in these shells so once they're caught they're immediately removed and they're held in a safe manner after which we put a ring uh, on the bird each ring has a unique code using which we can identify this unique bird additionally every mist net has a temperature humidity logger associated with it which records the temperature humidity throughout the day therefore when we note down the time at which a bird falls into the net and is caught we can go back to the temperature humidity record and find the corresponding temperature humidity uh, data for that particular capture for example this long tail broadbill was caught at 7 am today we will go back and find the corresponding temperature humidity for this capture this single capture right and then we release the bird after collecting our data we release the bird after which they live a normal life until we capture it next year how do we analyze this data so the first thing that we have to look at is survival right now for those who don't know survival is essentially the probability that a bird in a particular plot is present on the plot the next year so to understand this we will take the example of a logged forest plot now in this plot there is a bird a yellow throated falveta that you can see here it's a unique individual with this identifier code and for this particular bird we can construct what is known as a capture history it's basically a bunch of time points between 2011 and 2021 in our case and in every year we have a bunch of ones and zeros associated with that year if it's a one it's a year in which we caught this specific individual and a zero represents a year where we didn't catch this individual so we concatenate this into what's known as a capture history for this bird and we do this for every single yellow throated falveta that we catch during our study so that might be 200 yellow throated falveta now we pass all those capture histories of every yellow throated falveta into a marker capture model which then calculates an apparent survival over time now this apparent survival importantly is different from true survival because apparent survival cannot distinguish between death and emigration so i just like to point that out after 2018 we do not know if this bird has died or if it has moved out of the plot all we can say is it's not been found on that plot and this is what the final graph looks like the y axis shows the apparent survival and the x axis shows time a year of study rather the green represents primary forest and the brown represents log forest which is the color scheme that we're going to follow throughout the presentation so that was the survival analysis how do we analyze the the temperature humidity niche right which is the which is the crux of what we're trying to do so for this we selected 17 species based on the criterion that they're represented by at least five uh, individual data points in both primary and logged forest now once we selected these species we constructed uh, the niche of that species using a utilization density kernel which is a distribution model that i will uh, highlight right now let's take the example of this log tail broadbill we plot the temperature and humidity uh, along the we plot temperature along y axis and humidity along x axis and we the points corresponding to the capture of the log tail broadbill in logged forests are represented here as orange points now as you can see in temperature and humidity niche niche space each one of these points represents a temperature and humidity at which this bird was caught within a log logged forest now we fit this into a kernel which looks something like this and we do the same thing for all the captures of this species in the primary forest therefore we have something like this now we want to also understand not only the size of the niche in the primary forest but also the degree of overlap with the logged forest and for that we use the udoi uh, index essentially what you have to know to understand this presentation is that a higher udoi means a higher degree of niche overlap therefore a bird with exactly similar niches will have the highest udoi where a bird with disjunct niches will have the lowest uh, udoi this is what an actual plot looks like for a yellow throated falveta as you can see here the brown represents the log forest and the uh, green represents the primary forest in the temperature humidity niche space so that was all to do with the method what do we actually find 
So firstly, we wanted to examine how the abiotic environment looks in logged and primary forest. And in terms of temperature, on the y-axis is average temperature, and on the x-axis is time of day. The logged forests seem to have much hotter days and more variable temperatures throughout the day than the primary forest. On the other hand, logged forests were consistently drier than primary forests. Now, both these things are expected from previous literature because we remove the buffering effect of the forest canopy when we log a forest. Right? And so now that we've established what is happening to the general abiotic environment, what happens to the body mass in relation to these things? Now, in terms of body mass, here you can see the slope of body mass over time. So this is the slope of body mass over time on the uh, y-axis and different parameters on the x-axis of the panel. Every point here represents an individual species and a green point represents that species in primary forest. A uh, corresponding uh, brown point represents that species in the logged forest, right? And interestingly, in, in terms of body mass, we found no relation whatsoever between any niche parameter, be it size or uh, niche dissimilarity. We found no relation between the body mass over time and that parameter, right? Now, how might this be? Because our hypothesis going in was that uh, these specialists are going to become smaller and smaller over time, right? Because they're going to be the most stressed with what we went in thinking. How might this be? So the first possibility is that birds are changing their body structure without changing their body mass. Uh, a study in the Amazonian basin by Jirine et al. did show that understory and midstory birds invested more per gram of body mass into their wings uh, over time. Now, this is with this makes thermodynamic sense pr predominantly because pronounced ex extremities like wing better offload heat, right? Further adding support to this possible explanation is that our birds had an average body mass of less than 12 grams in weight, right? So they might not be enough physiological freedom to reduce the size, uh, the body mass altogether. Therefore, they, they might be increasing their wing length for the same amount of body mass because, again, wings offload heat better than the core body. Another thing that might be happening is a neutral effect of logging. Now, what I mean by this is that previous studies, especially in islands struck by uh, disasters, have shown that birds in a more variable environment after such a calamity are selected for larger and larger sizes. This is predominantly nutritionally driven in that larger birds are better starvation resistant. So if you don't know when your next meal is going to be in an increasingly variable situation, you're better off being bigger. However, if the temperature is hotter, right, as classical thermodynamics predicts, your, your body size has to become smaller so that you dissipate heat better, right? So better heat dissipation at smaller sizes can be an added advantage when the temperature is higher. And this would predict that the bird species gets smaller. So what's interesting is that logging, as we showed earlier, does both these things. The environment becomes more variable and it increases the mean temperature, right? Uh, so, in short, we, looking at body mass alone doesn't tell us much, but what's actually happening with survival, right? Survival is actually what's going to determine whether these birds are going to be found in the long term or not. And contrary to what we thought, we found that the size, so as you can see here on the x-axis, uh, are the various uh, parameters, niche area, humidity range, or temperature range represents the size of the humidity niche, and log VDOI represents the uh, degree of niche overlap. A higher VDOI, remember, again means a larger overlap, and a lower VDOI means uh, more disjunct niches between logged and primary forest. And on the y axis here is the slope of survival over time. Right? So we found no relationship between the size of the niche area and the survival trends over time. But the only thing that we found significant effects for was the, the degree of dissimilarity between uh, primary and logged forests. In that, the more dissimilar your niches were, the more likely that you were, uh, that you were to face survival declines over time. Right? So this is very interesting because it, it shows to say that specialists, how we defined it, 
to be a smaller niche sizes are equally vulnerable to uh, declines as generalists but the only thing that determines these declines is how different the niche is going to be when you log that for it this might be happening in two ways the first is a direct impact where in abiotic niches and log forests are generally less diverse than those found in primary forests therefore bird species are unable to find the exact same niche that they are used to in primary forest in a log forest and thereby inducing a greater amount of stress uh another impact this might be having is that is to an indirect impact on species in that dietary resources are what being affected by uh, changes in the abiotic environment and thereby having cascading effects on uh, uh bird species now last it opens up a very interesting question that if we can predict declines now this is is it's sort of a paradox because often by the time you realize that the species is in decline it's already witnessed considerable declines at the population level right before you identify it to be an endangered species that's undergoing decline what would be really used is if we had objective quantification of a species is vulnerability to extinction upon anthropogenic change right and as we show by measuring temperature humidity niches it is possible to correlate that with the survival trends over time so the question that remains is if this will help in effective use of resources because often by the time you channelize your resources to a particular species of conservation it's already witnessing population level declines throughout the landscape so if you can give these resources to more vulnerable species before they actually undergo these declines uh you might be better off in terms of the results that you get through uh, every dollar of money invested into conservation right so that's it uh, for this talk to summarize log forest plots are drier and hotter than primary forest plots abiotic niches have no uh, impact on body mass or survival trends over time and the only thing that matters is the degree of niche dissimilarity between logged and primary forest in that the larger the dissimilarity between logged and primary forest niches the higher is the rate of population decline for that species the way forward obviously would be to incorporate dietary parameters a factor of the biotic environment because we've looked at only the abiotic niche and also the the behavioral adaptations that bird species might be undergoing in relation to these niche parameters right that's it from my end i'd just like to end by thanking the global change lab for all their support our field assistance at eagleness without which this work is impossible the funding bodies that made this work possible over the long study period and our natural pradesh forest department for all their assistance uh, thank you for your time i look forward to any questions that you might have